I'm jumping off, is this a needed suicide? I hope my parachute don't let me down I hope I get the fly I don't know why, why I feel like I gotta die to be alive I don't know why, it feel like people are standing still With no desire, I'm on the wire Wobbling back and forth, the balance clown I won't be happy, if I'm not moving forward Then send me down, my vibration for eternity Will continue to come around So I gotta do this right, I gotta live, I gotta But before we get into anything I have some quick questions. Sure. It'll be like some stretches and stuff like that. I don't think I want to use these. I think I want to use the ones I already got. Let me see. Hold on. Here we go. Booyah. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. All right. So <laughs> what is the one thing about trucking or, I mean, orientations you don't like? I'm not in my routine yet. I, I have um, a kind of a bad memory, so repetition is really important to me. So I need repetition, and as soon as you know, I'm not in the groove yet of what they want me to do, their expectations, and I really don't like meeting new people. Oh man, okay. Uh, <laughs> are you now? Let me ask you something. Are you talking to me through your your headset because you're breaking up? If if you are. I am. Let me like, take it off. Yeah. All right, let's try this. Hold on. Ooh, hey. Hold on. Lady Trucker. Hold up. All right, there you go. There you go. There you go. It sounds. Tear a video off. All right, that sounds much better. Can you hear me still? Yep, I can hear you. We'll okay. take this off. Yeah, that sounds much, much better. All right. Um, okay. So you say you don't like people. You you don't like meeting new people. That's why you don't. Uh, that's why you don't like the orientation. Well, sort of, kind of. Like I like um, quality, not quantity. I guess I keep my circle pretty small, and just meeting different people. Um, I work a lot. Like I work. 12, 13, 14 hours a day. So I, I mean, I see my customers, some um, LTL, but it's like, hello, goodbye, sign the paper, I'm out. <laughs> so I get a lot of windshield time too. So I kind of like my solitude. Okay. Okay. All right. Which one of these, which one of these uh, fuel stations you rock out with? Loves, TA, Petro, Pilot, or Flying J? I always like TA, but there are no TAs where I drive. Where do you drive? Oh, I'm up uh, between Wenatchee, Washington, and Canada. All right, so you so you in Washington State? Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm in Central Washington, and I just deliver straight up. Mm -mm. Don't mess with Washington over there, man. I have, you know what? I drove all the states except for Nevada, Washington, Utah, Montana, and North Dakota. Yeah, yeah. I think those are the ones that I haven't uh, that I haven't hit yet. What about what yeah. about your what about yourself? Which 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 are the states that you that you hit or haven't hit yet? I hit them all but Maine. Oh, uh, but so how do you feel about the Northeast? I'm from Pennsylvania. So I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. I moved out here about four years ago to Washington State and I don't want to go back because there's a really big difference in people. Like over here people are more genuine uh they're more courteous but and over on the east coast i've driven on the east coast for a few years um we have semi trucks cut off other semi trucks they don't get two shits now you now that that's where you fr well you you're from pa born and raised in pa i oh. freaking hate pa i really do that is the, that is the only state 
that it only takes a couple of minutes to get there. It takes like an eternity to get out of it. I mean, it does. I mean, going down 90 from where from where I'm at, I'm from Ohio. Going down 90, it, it says on the on the thing like I, I could get to Erie PA in about 45 minutes or about an hour and a half at the most tops. PA, yeah. boom. But between going through PA up to New York, it takes an eternity to get through PA. Like, God it does. damn it, it man. Mm-hmm. And there's also there's always a lot of road construction. Yeah. So I think your state flower, I think your state flower is the construction cone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it it is it's it's unbelievably crazy i i would i went to yeah. i went to philadelphia uh just last week not a fan but i but i i did go across the the the, the bridges the the ones that goes up and down the ones that they showed on the dark night yeah i i kind of i kind of got a kick out of that one because Nice. Aren't, aren't those aren't those the bridges are the only ways to get into the city? Ain't no other way to get into the city it's other bad. than going through the bridges. That's crazy. <laughs> Secure the That's crazy. It's like if the if yeah, the, I'm, ha- I'm getting anxiety thinking about that. <laughs> I mean, when you, I mean, I, I, have you now? How how long has it been before you left Philadelphia to for Washington? Um, I mean, how long have I been out here? Yeah, four years, I think. I was about to say, so damn long, you forgot all about it, huh? <laughs> Three, four years. I think it's I think it's four years. All right. So during the time in Philadelphia, has there ever been one time that those those bridges been stuck in the up position? I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I'm my whole family. Well, my uncles and my cousins are from Philadelphia, so I spent a good time sitting on the stoop and you know in central Philadelphia with my family, but um grew up like on the outskirts in Levittown and then then I grew up in the Poconos and then I moved to um right outside of Bloomsburg. All right. Ram and Nally or Garmin? Garmin. Why? Because I'm not familiar with Ram McNally. Oh get out. You the, it, I, I'm I'm a Ram and Nally fan. I'm 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 sorry. Which which one do you got? Do you got the ten? Do you got the ten inch or you got the seven inch? Believe it or not, I don't. I'm a local driver now. I don't have any of it. Oh, okay, okay. You know what? Let's let's talk about let's let's talk about being local. And how long have you been driving all together? About six years, seven years. All right. So about seven years, you got you you got your license when you were in Philadelphia, right? Did you go to school or in did Pennsylvania. you or in, in Pennsylvania? Thank you. Did yeah. You, uh, you, you went to school or you went to a trucking school to get your license? Like a, a, a trucking school. I went to, um, a school, it's a college in Tannersville, Pennsylvania. And I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. What was now, what was the, now what you was doing before you got into trucking? I read now, you know, I read a little bit of uh of your bio and you have you you have an amazing story. So, what what you was doing before trucking? I was a school bus driver. I transport handicapped kids. I did that for 9 years until I had this one girl who she was 20, 20 21 years old because mm-hmm. they can go to school a bit longer handicapped kids. Mm-hmm. So, um and she was pretty She's a lot bigger than me too. She jumped on my exit door on me three times in one year. And then I had a monitor too, but my monitor was older. Mm-hmm. And she was 60, 62, 60, in her early 60s. And um, this girl was very, very big and the monitor was little. So I was complaining to my dispatcher. She told me, basically, shut the fuck up and do my job. Oh, geez. Ain't this the one yeah. that ain't ain't this the same one that that jumped out the back door? 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She jumped at my exit door three times on me. Now, she she was this type of kid that just had mental problems, or what, what what was going on with that? She was, well, she was really, she was, oh God, she was a poor girl. She was heavily abused by her mom. She had mental problems to begin with, but her own mom molested her. Oh, my God. So we, I dealt with a lot of kids like that who were molested, who have a lot of um, setbacks in life. Uh, yeah. So it was fulfilling. I, re- I really do miss it, but that kind of killed me, you know, because she could have died. Oh, my God. I mean, uh, how I, I heard plenty of stories of kids or like females getting molested by their fathers, but never have I heard never by their mom. I never heard nothing by the moms, man. Like, yeah. Wow. I mean, did did the did did the school or did the, the company that you drove for knew of her background and her mental aspect? Yep. Was, yes, they did. And you, you went and told them and they just told you, forget about it. Just do your job. Basically, yeah. Shut up and do my job. So because there was there was nothing that they else they could do else. They tried all kinds of stuff to keep her in her seat. And she was twice the size of me. Why not why why not just get her off the bus? Was there a way to get her off the bus? Mm -mm. No, because it was a special school she went to. Oh my God. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, it, it happens. So what, yeah, that's that's the main reason why I quit driving school bus. Did you did did you know uh, did you did did you know anything else of of the young lady's background? Like, it, did they take her away from her mother or? They is, did. Did her mother did. did her mother get in any trouble? She had to get into some type of trouble for that. I don't know. It's all like HIPAA law, so I really don't much. Man, that's all I was in there was like, yeah, this, this, like, just what I said. Man, that's crazy. I, I, I never heard of that. Mm-hmm. I heard of, I heard of the father. Yeah, yeah. But the mother. But the mother. Oh my God, that's yeah. wow. So you decided to, uh, you, you decided to get, yeah, my heart. You, you decided to get out of that. Um out of the out of the bus field and that's when you decided to get into trucks why why did you choose trucking as a as as a career to get into next well when i stopped driving the school bus it went to the american red cross and i took a huge pay cut and i was driving the you ever see the blood buses yeah like the the mobile buses where i drove them i oh. stepped up i drove them i unloaded them that was really hard work i did that for like six months i think because the hours were ridiculous and it was really hard work. I was like an hour away from home. So I just took out my retirement from the school and then I just took completely off this way I can concentrate and get my CDL. And because I was driving anyway, so would it matter if I drive something that's a little bit bigger, you know, and it's just the freedom, the freedom's amazing. People don't understand all the window, like window time you get. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of time to think about your life and think about things that's happened and kind of like put them in order, you know, for yourself. All right. So let's uh, let's let's uh, talk about your family. When when you went back and told them, you said, you know, you must have told them like, hey, you know, I quit my school bus drive, but I'm about to I'm about to go and, you know, go another direction with my life and get into truck driving. How, how did they take it? Um, they said I, I put the bill pretty damn good. <laughs> I, I put the bill for it. I'm the black sheep of the family. Um, I'm the one that likes to try different things and do different things. And, you know, not so much my siblings. Mm-hmm. You, um, told your spouse at, at the time uh that she was that she was about to that she was about to you know get into truck driving mm-hmm. but you had a you you had a issue you had an issue here that uh 
that involved the the sheriff's department coming out uh to remove you from the house um elaborate on that for a little well when when my ex-husband's father my ex-father-in-law passed away just of a random massive heart attack um i guess my ex didn't know how to how to grieve i i have no clue he was, he was an alcoholic anyway um so he started drinking more and more and i just had enough of it i him and i were arguing once on another time and i told him point blank i don't care if the house burns down you can have it i want to walk away you want to take the kids i want to go you can do what you want well he had political ties which i had no idea at the time um my ex-father-in-law was um really good friends with the state representative mm-hmm. and my ex ex's cousin was involved in child services okay. so well, when my ex went to the courts and said um, she threatened to burn the house down, that's not what I said. I said, I don't care if the house burns. You can have it. Just I want to fucking they, walk away. I, they, want, they, I want my peace of mind. They they manipulated your words. He did. Yeah. He And he was drunk when him and I were arguing. So whatever. Um, so I had the sheriff's department come and remove me. Because he went to the courts and said what he said. But he also said in the paperwork that, like, I dyed my hair, I got contacts, and I got my nails done. And he thought I was fucking batshit crazy because I got those things done. Well, you know, like, for for women that, that goes through a traumatic, it, I mean, situation, the the first thing that you guys do, you, you, you would change up your appearance. You mm-hmm. would, you know... You you would you know if your hair was long you cut your hair if your if your nails was black you 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 paint them blue you know yeah. and you know you didn't wear makeup now you wear makeup you you trying to present you you make you working on yourself to make yourself better and to a guy that's that's to a guy I think that's you know that's he's afraid of change like. He was more afraid, I think, losing me than anything. Um, that's that's what that's what I think. A lot of other people have said that too. He was more afraid of losing me. Um, but if he would have stayed off the alcohol, and it wasn't hard liquor, really, it was mainly beer, but that I know of. But um, he just changed into a different person. Yeah, drugs, and I had enough drugs, of it. Drugs would definitely do that. <laughs> you know, yeah, so, you know, drugs, alcohol, yeah, drugs and alcohol definitely will make a make a make a good it person family. turn insane. <laughs> well, that's like a lot of people, you know, whoever's going to listen to this, you might besides like keep on drinking and whatever, you might want to think about the person you turn into when you're when you're doing that and what you're doing to your significant other or your children. Now you uh now for a time you did stay away from them, right? Uh for those three weeks I was kicked out of the house, but I we had a court and of course he got custody of the kids, uh, because he had ample time to manipulate the kids. So I um it's kind of hard to talk about a little bit, but I came back to the house because I went through with my kids. Definitely. Um, what was, uh, and if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. That that's fine. If if if. Well, it's but too- you know what though, it, it, it's okay. Like it still bothers me, but it is what it is. Uh, like I don't have no tissues in here either, but I have my sleeve. Uh, like I'll sit there and tell people. Let me say this. You cannot be a good parent or a good person in a toxic relationship. So what the fuck are you people doing? Get out. Get out. Go do what you need to do to get yourself out of it. Because I waited too long. And you and honest and honestly, you know, you did it. You you did it for the kids. But let me ask you this. I, I, and I know doing it for the kids is like the biggest thing the biggest saying, especially from a female that's in a toxic relationship. She just, you, you, you would come and say, yo, I, I stayed in it with my kids, but I, I'm just going to say if, if it's 
that bad. Even for the kids, you got to you you got to get out because you got to you got to look out yeah. for you, you know. Most true. And then if I could if I could rewind time, I would. I would so love to, you know, have a redo. Not of like having kids with somebody different because I wouldn't have my kids. It's just I wish I would have left when I had the opportunity and started my life and went into trucking a lot sooner. Now, there's so many there's so many things out there that could help you get out of you know the situation you're in whether you're a man you're a woman it doesn't matter if you're a dad if you're a mom exactly. don't be in a toxic relationship exactly um what now you move back you 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 move back home and it pretty much got it it pretty much got worse instead of better um he 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 started demanding more of you you know he started demanding more of you and at at this point you know you thought that you know doing that was was your job how how did you how how did you turn how was you able to turn yourself off in you know being intimate with him I just, it was like a switch. I just went numb, completely freaking numb. Like he had custody of the kids so, and it was my house. I own the house. He, his name, we were married, but his name wasn't on it. So considering he, you know, written that down in the protection against abuse, whatever. And he got custody of the kids. Um, like I had no choice. Like I had a choice. I had a choice, but then like you always think for the kids, 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 you know, like if I didn't have sex with them, um, I was to leave and not come back. Oh man. Again, I, I am, I, I am definitely so sorry for, um, for all of that, man. I mean, it is your, again, your story is a powerful story. Um, and I am glad that, you know, you're here to share it with me and to share it with everybody else that might have that might have been uh, that might have been in your predicament. But down the line, there was a silver lining and that silver lining was trucking. So it, how it, re it really was. It really was. It was. But I'll but I'll say this, too, because I got to get rolling in a couple of minutes. But mm -hmm. for the people who like are in that not very good relationship. Um, everything I went through for, for my kids was, it wasn't fucking worth it. Not worth it. You know, cause now like they really don't talk to me. Do you know what I mean? So I went through all everything I did for them for nothing. So you have to do what's good for you. Not what's good for everybody else. That's what I got out of that. Exactly. Exactly. Candace, I like I said, you, you but you good now though. Like I said, trucking yeah. saves you, trucking saved your life. So you it you, did save my life. You you got into trucking. You you got mm -hmm. you got your over the road experience. Now you're now you're a local driver up in up in Washington State. How has your relationship <laughs> how has how's your relationship now? Like you with my husband now? Oh you oh you married now? Oh you married again? Yeah, I remarried. Oh yeah. okay, okay. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right. So how's so how's your relationship now? It's it's good. I have I have a much better relationship. Um my husband Mike now does he'll do he'll do anything for me that if you know, because he knows I I bust my ass. Like I move anywhere between 20 or 10 to 20,000 pounds of freight a day. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he does the same thing. I just, with my company, I work longer hours. So he's, he's a good husband. All right. That's what's up. Where, where did you, uh, where did you guys meet? Y'all, y'all both truck drivers. Y'all met at a, at a mm -hmm. fuel stop. Where, where, where did y'all meet at? Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. God damn it, man. <laughs> Facebook. We were talking. Facebook dating a, or Facebook group? No, we had a mutual friend and me and my friend Shannon were just having a conversation on ourselves. And then he chimed in and I guess um, he asked her, like, who is this? And she told him this truck driver and stuff like that. He's like, really? 
And then he friend requested me before I accepted it. I called up my friend Shannon. I said, who is this asshole? (laughs) (laughs) Your lady's coming with the rawness, man. I was like, who is this? So I, I mean, I said it Saturday. I mean, we just talked for the longest time because he lived in Texas. Oh, okay. And then after I left my, and then after I left my ex, he came up a couple months later and he just kept on coming up to the, to the Northeast. And I thought he was fucking crazy because who would come up to the Northeast for anybody? <laughs> hey, that, that, that long distance love works. <laughs> It works. That long distance works. love works. But now you're now you're uh now you're a local driver. Let, let, now you know a lot of guys out here, you know, that don't like local driving. They said there ain't no money in local driving. What what do you got to well, say to debunk that? Um they're probably fucking lazy. Mm. Because I work anywhere from ten to sixteen hours a day. And I bring home well, every two weeks I get paid, but I'll bring home well over three thousand dollars every two weeks after yeah. taxes. After Uncle Sam takes his look, he gives me his look and so I say I, I say local is work. So it's it's hard. And I'll say you get more quality of sleep driving over the road. You get ten hundred percent because by the time I go home tonight and by the time I get home. Um, it's not, it's going to be eight thirty nine 9 o'clock. And then I'm up at five, five thirty. 30, you know, funny. and then I go it to sounds, work and it sounds like, my yeah, time. And then, it's yeah time I get and, up around four o'clock in the morning. It's not, well, you, you're three hours away, right? So it's nine yeah. o'clock my time. It's six o'clock your time right now. Right. Yep, six sixteen. All right, and I know that you got to get back going. So definitely, Candice, thank you very much for coming on to the show and sharing your uh, experience with us. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Shout out to uh, shout out to this lady for being a strong lady to get the, the know your worth to get up out of the relationship. How I, I know I know it was I know it was heartbreaking that your kids now. How well, let me ask you this. How, how is your relationship with your kids now? Um, Almost non-existent. Yeah, they don't really like who I'm with now. And, you know, their dad played or not played, but put whatever said to whatever he did to them. I wasn't there. I wasn't a fly on the wall. I went to visit them not this past winter, but the winter before. And it was actually right when the coronavirus started hitting. Um, I went to Pennsylvania right before we heard about it, like a week before we heard about it. Um, and my daughter didn't want to see me. And then my son, which I love him, but I love both of my children. But, you know, his whole thing was, mom, it wasn't really planned. I, I planned it within a week. And he said, mom, you know, you really need to plan this out better so I can, you know, schedule you in and spend time with you. And meanwhile, like he was more concerned about his dad was really upset. I was back in town, right, to visit or whatever. He was more concerned about his dad's mental well-being. And That's some shady fucking shit and to do I, to your kid. And I, I, I guess it was just going down and down and down. As far as it did, I, I, I see my son twice and I'm happy I see him twice. I'm thrilled, you know, but I'm staying out of the picture. Um, I'm there for them. I, whatever. Uh, but I'm not going to play, I'm not going to play the type of war games parents do. You know, if when I went to visit it, I got a good glimpse of what it would be like if I fought for the kids to be in their life. They're older. They're, 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 they're adults. So they're adults again you they're not, not little kids. again you got to look out for yourself now so they're they're adults they well, start they got their own lives to live now it's time for moms to get you know to be happy because i mean 20 years 20 years right i mean if i'm reading 20 years right of of just a toxic yeah, relationship 
you know, he, um, it was for the most part, it was for the most, there was some, there were some good times then there, there was, it wasn't all bad, but a lot of it was bad regardless, either screaming and yelling or, you know, him coming home drunk or wherever the case may be, you know, I, it's, when you got, that's okay. When, you know, he, when, when you got in, when you got into trucking, your, your <laughs> husband accused you of being a lesbian. Because you was driving a semi truck, how did that make well, you? Yeah. How, how did that make you feel when when he accused you of that? Well, he accused me of that because I didn't want to have sex with him. So I didn't want to have sex with them, and I drive trucks, so therefore I had to be a lesbian. Mm. So, I mean, when you sit there, like I remember, he did do one thing for me. He built a really pretty garden for me, and I remember I was in the garden. He came up saying his brother, his brother is gay. So his brother's a big guy. And my ex husband was homophobe, homophobic, I guess you would say. And then um, he came up to me and I gained a little bit of weight. Like I'm not skinny, I'm fluffy, but gained a little bit of weight from driving truck. You know how that goes. And then, um, you know, he woke up to me, he goes, you know, you and my brother have something in common. You both suck dick and you both are fat. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that. Wow. Yeah. So why why would I want to have sex with somebody who sits there and says me and his brother have something in common? We both suck dick. You're both fat. Wow. He. Oh, that's painful, right there. That's man. fucking ballsy. That's like, painful. That's, yeah. Wow. It's. Uh, yeah, so so I yeah, mean, it, it, was it, it, it was time. It it was it was time to leave. Shout out it to you, man. To I mean, you you had to. I, I'm I'm just glad everything worked out for you. You was able to find a man that 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 cares for you and and treats you for the woman that you are. Shout out to you know your husband. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Just, he actually he he helped me through a lot, and he did. Um. He, he's a good man. He can be an asshole and I can be a bitch once in a while, but <laughs> no one's perfect, right? I agree, man. I agree. Well, Candice, yeah. go ahead and get back on the road. Thank you very much yep. for joining me tonight. I really do appreciate it. And that's going to do it for the Lockout Man podcast show, everybody. My cool. special guest, Candice, she came on tonight to chop it up with me for a little bit. Looking like Shirley Temple over there. Yo, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that bell and that all button and make sure you just hit that like button. Yo, if you want to come on or chop it up with me just like Candice, you can hit me up in the DM and we can go from there. Or you can hit me up in the Gmail, which is LockoutManPodcast at gmail.com. Special thanks to my uh, special guest tonight, Candice. Thank you, ma'am. So you about to get back to work. Everybody else, y'all take it easy, and I'll come back at you with another video. Peace. One, two, three. Bye. This show, yeah, get it in. Yeah. Party over here, get it in. Yeah. She like a liquor clear, get it in. Yeah. She get it from a deal, get it in. Yeah. Make it disappear, get it in. Yeah. Park it in the rear, get it in. Yeah. Now make it reappear, get it in. Freak it with no fear, get it in, yeah Pop, pop, pop it in the clutch, girl, get it in, yeah Jump on it, double touch, girl, get it in, yeah Drop, drop, drop it, double clutch, girl, get it in, yeah Pump it up, butt lift, now downshift